Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve a problem is subsequence. So subsequences come up a lot, especially in dynamic programming problems. So this is a good question to kind of get familiar with them before you solve some of those harder dynamic programming problems. Problems like longest common subsequence, which is a problem uh, that I'm probably going to be solving pretty soon, probably in the next video. So we're basically given two strings, right? S and T. And we just want to know if S happens to be a subsequence of the string T. So first you have to understand what a subsequence is. To say that S is a subsequence of T basically means that all the characters from S, so let's say that this was our string S, all the characters of S can be found in T, right? Let's say this is our T string. All of the strings from S can be found in T in the order that they're given. So A, right, A, C, E can be found in this string. Uh, with eliminating some characters. So you take the A, you can find it in the first position. You take the C, you can find it in the third position. And you take the E, you can find that in the last position, right? We're not required to use every character. So basically what we're doing is getting rid of the B and getting rid of the D. And then you can see that this string becomes ace, right? So th therefore ace is a subsequence of T. Take a look at this. If this was our string S, it would not be a subsequence. Even though the characters can be found, right? A, E, C can be found. They're not in the order that they need to be in, right? So it seems like a pretty straightforward problem, and that's because it actually is. That's why it's an easy problem. So we can actually do this with a linear time algorithm, basically by comparing the two strings. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So the first example returns true because S is a subsequence of T, but how can we determine that? How can we prove that, that, that that's true? So it's actually easier than you might think. We're going to use two pointers. So I'm going to have one pointer I initialize at the beginning of our string S, and I'm going to have another pointer J initialize at the beginning of string T, right? And really, we're just, we're, just, we're just checking all of these characters. We want to check them off. We want to say, okay, A can be found in T, B can be found in T, and C can be found in in t right and if we have some extra characters like these it's okay we can, we're allowed to skip those characters so when we're using our pointer j we're allowed to skip some characters right but i we want to with our string s we we really need to know that every one of these characters can be found here so it's a two-pointer solution right we initialize our pointers let's compare are these two characters equal? Yes, exactly they are. They're both A, that's what we wanted. We needed to find an A. So now that we found that A, we can shift our I pointer to the next position. We're gonna be looking for the next character B. We also have to shift our J pointer because we were not allowed to reuse this character, right? So we, we shift our J pointer over here. And now we're looking for B. So compare B with H. So this is H, right? That's not B. That's not what we're looking for. So since we didn't find this character, we can't shift our I pointer. But we do have to shift our J pointer because this is not the character we're looking for. We have to check the next character. Now let's compare the characters. B equals B. Great. So we found the character. We know that when we find the character, we actually shift both of the pointers. So let's shift our I and let's shift our J pointer. And now the only character we need to find is C. So we look at G, it's not C. So in this case, when we don't find the character we're looking for, then we only shift our J pointer, right? So J is D what we're looking for. It's not equal to C. So we shift our J pointer again. So now J is over here. That's the character we're looking for. We found C. So we shift our I pointer once more. Once I is out of bounds, that means we found every single character we were looking for, right? And we can check every one of those characters off. That means we found our solution. So that means we can stop the algorithm and return true. So CJ, it doesn't really matter where J is or what it's doing. Once I reaches out of bounds, we are done. So we return true. So now let's look at the second example. How do we know if that S is not a subsequence of T. Basically, how do we know when we need to return false? So we're gonna run the algorithm exactly as we just did. So we're gonna initialize I and J just as we did. So now let's, we wanna find this A, right? The first character, so we compare it. Yes, we found it. So when we find the character, we shift both of the pointers, right? So I and J are at the next position. So now we're looking for X, but 
you're gonna see we don't have an X in the, the other string. So uh, let's look at this position. H, that's not X, right? So we shift our J. B, that's not X, so we shift J again. G, that's not X either, so we have to keep shifting J, right? We shift it here, that's not it. We shift it here, that's not it either. So now we've gotten to a point where J is out of bounds, right? We have no more characters to check, but we still need to find these two characters, right? We need to find X and C in that order, but we didn't find them. So what this means is we have to return false. S is not a subsequence of T, right? So we return false. That's how you know you return false if J is out of bounds before we find every character we need to. And clearly you can tell that this is an O of N algorithm where N is basically the total number of characters we're given in S and T, so S plus T basically. So with that being said, let me show you the code. So as we showed, our I and J pointers are both gonna be initialized at the beginning, so both initialized at zero. And we're going to run a loop, right? We're going to keep running this loop while both of the pointers are in bound. So while i is less than the length of s, because i refers to the string s, and j is less than the length of t. So we have two conditions, right? One condition is that the characters are equal. So s at position i is equal to t at position j. That's one condition. What are we going to do in that case? Remember, we're shifting both of the pointers. So we increment i and we increment j. If that's not the case, remember what we're doing. We didn't find the character at position i, so we don't increment i. We only increment j, right? So we increment j by one. And this is really all that we're doing. So, and actually, when you take a look at this, we can actually simplify this. We see that j is being incremented in both of these condition statements, so we actually don't need a condition for it. So, so we can get rid of this because j always is going to be incremented regardless of the comparison. Okay, so once this loop is done executing, how do we know if S was a subsequence of T or not? Well, if we reached the end of our string S, right? So basically, I is equal to the length of S, meaning that for every character in the string S, we were able to find a matching character in T. Then we're returning true, right? So that's this is how you can do it in Python. Um, and if that wasn't the case, then we're returning false, right? Because that means we, if, it, if this was not the case, that means our loop ended, right? That means our loop, that means J went out of bounds of T. That means we searched the entire T, but we couldn't find a matching character for every character in our string S, right? So basically our loop terminated, it stopped executing before we could find every character. In that case, we have to return false. So this is the entire code. And it works pretty fast because this is a linear time algorithm and no extra memory required. You can see it is pretty efficient. So this is basically a little beginner lesson in how subsequences work. Next time we'll probably be handling a difficult dynamic programming problem involving subsequences. So I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon.